Today we're going to discuss the last sections of chapter 14, which involves section 14.9 through 14.12. So uh, first let's talk about the effect of structure on acid-based properties. And so if we look at properties of an acid, two things that determine the properties of an acid are the strength of the bond and the polarity of the bond. And so, for example, let's look at a few examples of this. If we look at hydrogen halides. Remember the halogens are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, that group 7. And so hydrogen halides are HF, HCl, HBr, and HI. Well, hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid due to the strength of the H to F bond. So up top, these are listed in order of polarity. So this is the most polar. And so we would assume that it's going to be a really strong acid. But in actuality, hydrofluoric acid is really weak because it's such a strong bond that it doesn't really want to break apart. And so it's really hard to get the H to separate from the F, making it a weak acid. Another example are oxy acids. Oxy acids have the general formula H to O to X, X being some other compound or element. And the acid strength will increase as the number of oxygens attached to the central atom increases. So as we add more oxygens to this central atom, um, we're increasing the strength of the acid. Part of that is because oxygen atoms are electronegative, and so they will pull the electrons away from that O to H bond, um, polarizing it and weakening it. And so then we you know, ease, more easily get an acid or get those to dissociate. Another example um, along the same lines is oxy acids are hydrated metal ions. We talked about this in the previous section with the aluminum 3 plus. Um, so the acidity of the water molecules that are attached to the metal ion increases. Uh, air is increased by the attraction of electrons to the positive metal ion. So like we talked about before, the greater the charge, the more acidic the hydrated ion is. And so like Al3 plus is a very high charge and so it produces an, an acidic solution. There is a correlation between electronegativity of the X and the acid strength for oxy acids. And so that's what we're going to look at next is the electronegativity of that X. And so we'll look at this in section 1410. Okay, so acidic oxides depend on the nature of that O to X box. Remember we talked about the H to O to X was the general form. So there are two situations that you can have. Uh, if X has high electronegativity, um, then that means that the O to X bond is going to be really strong and covalent. So it's really likely to break apart. So when dissolved in water, the O to X is going to remain intact. So this bond is going to be really strong. But then what's going to happen is that this bond is going to be weak and it will break, thus producing uh, a proton or that H+. Plus. So we call these acidic oxides because they're releasing protons, so they're producing the, the H+. Plus. And so, for example, here's SO3 plus water um, goes to H2SO4. Or sorry, H2SO3, excuse me. So if we look at H2SO3, we have sulfur and then, oh, no, you know, that should be a 4. That was right the first time. Okay, so because this is our strong acid, and then we have... Oxygen, 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 and bonded to these are our hydrogens. And so um, this bond will stay intact because that's our covalent bond, whereas these will break. And so that's how we're getting the strong acid. Okay, so let's look at basic basic oxides. So if X has a low electronegativity then this means that the O to X bond is ionic and will break apart in water. And so that O to X bond breaks, if we look at our H to O to X, this one breaks. And so that releases the OH minus ion, producing a basic oxide. And so we look, if we look at this example, we have the calcium oxide and the water producing the calcium hydroxide. And so We've got our hydroxides from this ionic bond.
Okay, let's, we've talked about Arrhenius and Bradson Lowry acids and bases, and now let's look at a third type. These are Lewis acids and bases. So the Arrhenius acid and base was either H plus or OH minus. And we talked about the Bronson Lowry, which was either a proton donor for an acid or a proton acceptor for a base. And now we're talking about Lewis acids and bases. These are electron pair acceptors or donors. And so um, the basis for this is that bases have a lone pair of electrons that are accepted by the acids because in this case acids are electron pair acceptors. Um, and so they have an empty atomic orbital, so they'll take on the lone pair that the bases contain. Uh, this is convenient because not only does it include Bronson Lowry acids and bases, but it also covers reactions that don't involve Bronson Lowry acids. So it's it covers a lot of things that wouldn't be talked about before. Let's look at one quick example first of all. Um, so let's see where did my time go? There it is. So we've got Oops, not that. So we have, let's see, boron trifluoride. We have three, and then we're reacting with the ammonia ion. And so this is the Lewis acid. And because the ammonia ion has this lone pair, this is the Lewis base. And so what's going to happen is that the Lewis acid is going to accept that lone pair, and so we end up getting fluorine, fluorine, another fluorine. Oops, those should typically not go there. Okay, and then that lone pair creates a bond between the the BF3 and the ammonia. So H, H, H. So now we've got a compound. So Lewis acid accepts the lone pair. Lewis base contains the lone pair. So let's look at a few examples. So for each reaction, identify the Lewis acid and the Lewis base. Okay, so here we've got nickel 2 plus and 6 NH3. So if, sometimes it's easy to draw the Lewis structure. So we have six of these things, and we know ammonia has that lone pair, and then our three hydrogens. And so since this one has the lone pair, this is the Lewis base, and this is the Lewis acid. And it produces this nickel and creates that bond between our nickel and our six ammonia. Let's look at the next one. Okay, here we have H plus plus H2O goes to H3O. So if we draw Lewis structures, that's just A plus, H plus, excuse me. Uh, water, we have two lone pairs on the oxygen and then our two hydrogens. So as you can see with our lone pairs, this is our Lewis base, and this is our Lewis acid, and we form the hydronium ion. So we have our, our oxygen, excuse me, hydrogen, 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 and we know that that's becoming a plus. And so the Lewis acid accepted the lone pair from the Lewis base. Okay, so last but not least, let's talk about just kind of an overall summary of how to solve all these acid-base problems. Okay, so steps for success. Don't memorize a particular way to do the problem. Each problem is different. Although it may follow a similar pattern, you need to evaluate each problem individually. So the first thing to do is list the major species in the solution. This is going to help you decide, you know, is it a strong acid, strong base, weak acid, weak base? What does that mean as far as things associating? So it's, it's a good first step. Okay, then look for reactions that can be assumed to go to completion. So for example, strong acids and strong bases will completely dissociate. So for the reactions that are assumed to go to completion, determine the concentration of the products and write the major species in solution after the reaction. Okay, then look at each major component and decide if it's an acid or a base. Pick the equilibrium that's going to control the pH. Which one is going to be dominant? And you can use, also use dissociation constants to decide on that dominant equilibrium. Okay, so you can look at K and KB values. Um, so within that whole process, you're going to write the equation for the reaction and the equilibrium expression, so K and KB. You're going to use the ICE to solve for X. Always make sure you check your approximation. 
And if it doesn't work out, use the quadratic formula. Um, and then calculate pH or whatever else is required, concentrations, etc. Okay, so with these steps, think through each problem. You should have no problem with that basis.